Hi guys, Frisbee here. How you doing? Okay, a uh, long time no see besiege, huh? Okay, today we're going to look at uh, a lot of tank-based technologies, including uh, new scaling. Uh, no, that's what I call scaling. Uh, we'll be doing some tutorials. We'll be putting suspension into some of the tanks, and um, we'll be basically uh, looking at all sorts of new ways that I've come up with for building these things. Uh, they are amazing machines in Besiege. It's one of my favourite things to do is build tanks and bother sheep. Uh, and we'll finish it off with the bits of a battle, uh, as usual. That target practice. Okay, let's get right into it. So, okay, let's start with this guy. And um, what I was trying to do here was, uh, this is my first one with suspension on it. It's a bit all over the place and I had trouble keeping those tracks on. And I, they are just really basic tracks. I usually make them a bit more elaborate than that. But um, it went okay in the end, but I was also looking at, you know, new ways of making the body and having that look a bit more neat and a bit more uh, military. And, of course, to get some firepower into it. So we're using exploding cannonballs mod here. And the the cannon itself is on two times power. So it looks alright. It fires well. It runs well. It's just a little bit on um, the tracks. Not too happy with them. So let's move on to the next part. So I discovered what I needed to do was build the central body with the suspension of it and then have the track tension wheels and drive wheels pushed out to one side. Now this one you're looking at here, I do a main tutorial for it at the end of the video. This is not, But this is not the main tank that we're going to be building today or going to be looking at. Uh, I'm just showing you this to see how I progressed. But the, the tutorial for this will mostly feature building tools, trying to explain how they all work to you. Now, this is quite a revolutionary one, but um, the key feature of it, as you can see there, is the very uh, skinny hinges that have been scaled down and then broadened. And they've also been bumped by one third of a, a block into each other to give it that classic uh, tread look. In fact, it even looks, I think, like sort of Lego, you know, the plasticky rubbery Lego ones, which I quite like as well. Um, so it's a good look for this one, and it's got a very solid body in the middle. The suspension is nicely balanced, and um, we'll go into the, uh, the the actual track building techniques later on. I just wanted to show you the main body so that you could see what it looks like in operation and show you how the tech track tension is built separate to the, the suspension wheels so it doesn't affect them at all and that helps it to keep its, um, keep its uh, shape. Now, the thing that makes me addicted to building tanks is this, it's when you put it all together and then for the very first time you, <laughs> you hit go and then you just watch this thing come to life. It's just amazing. It's amazing the way that besieged the Unity 5 engine handles the physics on these treads. They're just, ah, I don't know, it blows me away every time. And I've still got lots more to explore, so I will be coming back to this. But I like those scaled out wheels. They act really nice. And uh, one set of idling jockey wheels at the back. But uh, all it remained to do now was put some guide rails on to hold the treads on and a few more spinners at the top to stop it sagging in the middle. But, um, from here, in the next next shot, you can actually get a nice view of how it's built. Not difficult at all, yeah? And uh, those adjustable suspensions, depending on the weight that I put on the body. Uh, and so here we have it. Um, what I went for was the just the ordinary freewheel cartwheels, and then it's at a 1.25 scale, and then thinned them right down to try and make them a bit more visible. I could have used soft wheels or you can use soft wheels i think other people have done that they'll be effective i just like to spoke to look on this and then i used the uh, the block tools uh, the building tool sorry by the guys you despise to start dragging things in and out and um, so you can see the technique is getting used here i put them on the, on one set of wheels and then one set of tracks and then i pull them forward to the other uh, based on where that wheel is it just seemed to be the best way to do it because you cannot attach a fresh block to an expanded wheel if it's been scaled because the connection point is deep inside it so it doesn't work so there we are we have our um, track controls on and we're about ready to go again it does look weird now um, it's starting to look I think like you know the bomb disposal robots you get with the with the, the grappling arm and the camera and the shotgun and it looks like something like that but it's actually quite massive compared to all the other things in the game but it drives like a dream. All I need to do now is put in some free wheels to stop that central bit wobbling down. And then we'll build some bodies on them. And ultimately we'll put on some firepower. 
So it's not going to look like a, a classic tank today. Uh, I just didn't think it merited it because it's quite a strange shape. It's got that dumpy look about it. But uh, totally loving the suspension and the way it behaves. As you'll see later on, you can chuck it about quite well, this one. Really nice, with or without invincibility, depending on what you're doing. But um, yeah, it's a cool little, um, it's a cool little track. Okay, and um, so you can see we've got the more idle wheels holding the track up, and I've just put temporarily uh, some wooden beams on just to give it a sort of bit of a bulk uh, and keep testing it. Always test them all the time, and always do loads and loads of saves. So that if something goes wrong, I just file back the way. But, uh, Again, using the, the scaling tool that's on Precision Builder, we just simply went for some armor plates and put them up to like three by two expansions and two by two expansions. And uh, I built a nice turntable in the middle, but we're not going to put, like I said, a classic tank turret on this one. But check that out, that's just so cool. And nice and bouncy. It's a lot of fun to play with. It really, really is. I spent ages with this one. As you can see, that had invincibility on it. I just pushed it off. And I just pushed my luck a little bit and one of the wheels came off. That's alright. It's uh, all fair and love and war, as they say. It's a good looking little fella, it really is. Okay, it's about time to start building things up. So the first thing I did was I played around with the placement offset and the scale tool together. Just to see what the results would be. This is a 7.5 degrees uh, rotation and like a 2 or 3 block spread to make it nice and thin. And again, I was just having a bit of fun coming up with some alien shapes or some medieval tank shapes even, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci type stuff. And uh, that one didn't work out, but the next one was hilarious. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> I don't know how you would describe it. Um, it's a kind of medieval radar. It's got a little guy inside there looking for archers and he's uh, semi-whatever protected. But um, joking aside, it was it was a good, good looking machine again because it's really quite weird. It looks like again something that... Command and Conquer or something like that. I don't know what it looks like, but it's really weird. It's fallen off it. Again, just to prove that it does run uh, without invis invincibility, you just got to tighten some aspects of it up uh, or reduce the speed of it. But I couldn't find an actual practical use for this, but it was, again, it was like so fluid. The physics is just working so well. It's just awesome. Look at that. So I, I do like this new track system. It's very fluid, it's very nice, and uh, I'll, I'm definitely just going to use it on future tanks. I'm going to stick with that one for a while and the suspension system. And then maybe get back to trying to build um, more realistic tanks or, you know, like copies of like, actual battle tanks from World War II and, and onward, stuff like that. Um, for the time being, it was good enough to just mess around with this guy. Now in a second, what we'll do is we'll start looking at some firepower. And what I wanted to do was to try and use cannons at their double power mounted on this thing, but try and reduce the recoil a bit. I couldn't get actual proper um, recoilless cannons. I know it can be done, but I haven't figured it out yet. So for the time being, oh, first we'll look at this guy. Wait till you see this. I just managed to catch this with the shadow play function on the G-Force. I had been having a laugh with uh, some expanded cannons and I turned this thing around and then just took a pot shot without even thinking about it. One shot, cannon comes off, the cannonball goes forward and <laughs> it's the tree. <laughs> awesome. A 10 out of 10 on that one. So this is my first attempt at the sort of recoilless one. And it's, um, it's still recoiling, as you would expect, but it's, um, it's taken it a little bit because that thing is really pounding away. It's two cannons on double power. So it's going pretty hard, but it's ungainly with all that mechanism sitting at the back and it's unbalanced it. So I had to rejig it, lose a bit of the recoil and stick the cannons on the front to get a more, and to improve the spin and the, aim, the aiming, because the aiming was terrible in this version. When you turn the turntable, it just was, um, you were, it was wobbling all over the place. So I come up with a new idea for that. And what we got was this guy, which as you can see, I'll you know in a second, far better at aiming. There is a reduced recoil still, even though I've reduced the springs and, or the travel uh, for the recoil, but it does work a lot better, it aims a lot better, balances a lot better, and sometimes it does mentally and explodes. As you can see. I've got invincibility on this time because there's a lot of, it's quite a violent action from the cans. But yeah, that, this is it, this is our finished guy. This is the one that we're going to go 
uh, into battle with and to have a good mess around before we go to the main tutorial which like I said is all about, all about the building tools by the guys who despise. I'm not going to cover all of the aspects of it, I can't, it's just there's so many things you can do with it, but I will look at the things that you can use to help you building tanks, uh, and there's a lot of them, uh, or to build complex machines. So, uh, meanwhile, we just tested this guy out, just to see what it was like. In a wee second, we'll take him away and we'll have a quick go on the sheets. It's really, that's, again, they, that's not a modded power cannon. It's got exploding balls on it, but it's just the normal cannon power. So if you get them set up right, they're okay. You just have to watch using double cannons because the cannons now pick up whatever directional momentum that they happen to have from whatever body they're moving on. So one cannon can cause another cannon to slow down as it recoils if the second cannon fires after it. Um, it's complicated, but it really isn't. Um, so okay, let's have a wee look at its climbing abilities here. Um, it runs, it runs like a dream. This is definitely my best set of running treads so far. Yeah, well pleased with that. Climbing wasn't bad. There seems to have been a change in the friction for these blocks, I think, because it is, it can, they do spin a lot more than what they used to, I think, when they're trying to climb things. But it seems to cope with this in the ball, especially given it's got a really high center of gravity, you know. And uh, yeah, it was all right. It went really well. All right, let's um, shoot the crap out of some freighters, as usual. I say freighters. We'll do the Duke's Place first because it's obligatory, especially for long range shots if you're just coming in, trying to do it on the hoof. And not bad. Like I say, this one is really good at aiming because it's got us a, a sort of stifting device on the turntable that stops it wobbling about all over the shop. So it was quite good for lining shots up and taking them uh, on the go. Yeah, yeah, good. Plenty of potential there. I think I'll work on the recoil thing again though. I think it's def I know that somebody solved it as far back as February of last year, or like a year ago, so it's completely solvable. If you, if you know how it's done, let me know in the comments because I would like to do that. Uh, I'm fed up with a heavy recoil thing. I know you can mod it out, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it by engineering means, physical means, and uh, see how we get on from there. So that's Duke's um, been taught a lesson as ever, didn't pay his rent. So um, I'm just building a nice new apartment here. Boom, just shooting at phantoms now. Yeah, again, climbs over the rubble, okay. It's not too bad at all. It's quite, I like that bounciness, yeah. It just gives it a real spot, proper realistic look to it altogether. Sweet. Mm. Okay, now let's have a pop out of freighter. So we go over there and just see how we got on with it. Yeah. It didn't really present much problem, as you can imagine, especially at this range. It's quite easy for that, given the power of the cannons and the aimability. What was a problem, however, was my firing skills, because they are always in question. Not really that great. But, uh, that just makes it more fun, because <laughs> you've got to sort of um, practice like crazy. I love watching these things blow up. They're really good. I hope we get some more flying machines in the next levels, which I don't know when they're coming, but I hope it's soon. <clears throat> they really do, you should, um, they should do more freighty type things, stuff that you can aim for in the sky, excellent, love it. Try, try to take out this, this far away guy here, look at that, boom, no problem. Again, like I said before, that's not a modded power cannon, it's just an ordinary vanilla cannon, so they've made, they've made good advancements with the last update to them. Yeah, quite powerful. Let's see, we'll just get a few more shots here, we'll practice this out, and then I will show you um, some nice techniques. If you've made it this far through the video and you like to make your own tanks, tanks I will show you some techniques for building them using the, the building tools by the guys you despise. That's coming up next. Why don't you finish these guys off? I was even closer this time, and I was still missing occasionally. Oh, I just clipped it. Yeah, lucky, lucky shot. But you can see, if you're looking at it carefully, there's a lot of edits in there. <laughs> I've missed real easy shots multiple times. Okay, tutorial. Okay, like I said, tutorial time. Now, the thing that I'm going to concentrate on here is how to get... Um, PCs moved around using that toolbar, the extra toolbar at the top, um, when you're in a bit of a fix. 
and what you're looking at here is me just completing the first set of links um, I mean I'm using I'm using the swivels on this one but you don't have to it works with any kind of block that you want to build a, a track with but, um, we'll just finish this off so you can see these were set at minus 0.35 and then it just sinks in and it's me putting the last block in it has to go sideways and that's it so we've completed one link we've got our suspension frame built it's time to start multiplying them up okay first thing you want to do of course is just hang it up hang one up like a necklace using a peg just to see if there's any problems and then run round painting the the blocks now as you can see i've got the little the little uh padlock one is in a lock position which means it's unlocked yeah uh, because but you can just paint it paint 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 it all the way around with one go but i prefer to just to sort of grab them individually and do it that way now if you hit unlock it goes like that that means that you can't accidentally select any other blocks and that's really useful when you're doing this but what i've also done here is i've selected the double one which is the two cubes to the right of the the size screen there and that automatically copies it then you just put your cursor the the cursor on it here and just drag it to wherever you want it to go like thus okay so there we've got a completed one side and i've got rid of the body here because we're going to rebuild it um, now here's a mistake that i made i've i've hit double here getting ready to move another set of them out but then i thought i've cleared it because i didn't like the selection thinking that i had cleared the double but I hadn't the double is still inside that one and what happens is it explodes into a thousand parts and um, so you just need to be careful of that when you're clearing it out don't clear it out if it's solid green like this if it's see-through green it's okay to cancel it out but if it goes solid green it means that your double is is still inside so i'm about to cancel it and then i'll hit space bar and it will explode boom it's quite entertaining but it's not much good if you're trying to build something so i had to go back a couple of steps yeah that's why i save i'll constantly save anything i'm going to do something dangerous like that i just save like crazy to make sure i've got backups okay we'll do it properly this time just one more check to make sure everything's going okay do a little copy and drag it over and then clear the selection using the clear selection button which is the x with the cube above it and that takes you back to normal there you go we're cleared okay so i'm now building a just a little basic i never finished using this tank it never became anything other than a set of treads i was just experimenting with the suspension i thought it would be useful to use it to show you two or three particular techniques that are really good with the with the building tools coming up in a minute yeah it's all looking quite you now notice here that the wheels because i've copied it the wheels are all pointing the same way and that's our number one problem we have to spin those wheels there so that they are facing inwards yeah so that we can push we can get the pushers on them so that they'll tension the track the same way and what we're doing here is we're using the the angle one and we're just we've highlighted one set of large wheels and large cogs on one side we spin it through the axis of one and then we change the translation tool and then just drag it all the way back through and now what we've done is we have successfully turned the important part the part that needs turning round within the the tracks and without without any fuss at all that would normally have taken me hours to do something like that that would have really driven me crazy it takes seconds now it's so easy you just have to be careful and uh, move it about easily now what happened after this was I discovered that I had some uh, braces that were now in the wrong place and see they're causing the wheels to stick to the tracks so how do I solve that same way you just again you just highlight the wheels themselves and the cogs all in one you just highlight one set like that this is really useful use this for all sorts of things not just tanks yeah then you drag it out using the translator translate tool Ta -da. And now you have access to the problem areas whereas previously before this uh, mod came along again that was a nightmare i always struggled with this when i was building tanks and then you just move them back in leave them highlighted the whole time i meant to say that's important and um, you can make little fine adjustments get them back in 
piece of cake. I mean, it's an absolute piece of cake. If you make a mistake, just re-highlight them or bring them back in and out again. Test it. Again, it's the other thing is you can hit the space bar, drop it, test it. If it doesn't work, adjust it again because they remain highlighted throughout. Perfect, absolutely perfect. And so quick one here, we're just finishing this off. We're putting in some really robust uh, pistons because it's a big, big, heavy set of tracks. I mean, the tracks, the, the track numbers alone here came, the block number alone, just for the tracks came to nearly 700. And that's why I, I, I didn't finish this one off. It was fun to build and fun to use and it worked well. But I really wanted to go back to building tanks that have got like 500 or less blocks in them. But as you can see with this one, it works just fine. There you go. Little bit, see that's fallen loose at the back. Again, no problem. You just dive right in there with the um, with the block tools and it, it works a treat. Here we are, a bit of sheep squashing. This is um, how they did sheep farming in the 14th century, I think. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one. You can see that you can see the suspension working really well over these blocks here, and then again up over the steps into the sheep pens. And that, uh, I improved I improved the the suspension massively with the tank that you've just seen with the little one, but this one wasn't too bad. It was a good learning curve. I managed to get a lot out of it. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I say hopefully some of it was useful to you. Um, there will be more massage videos coming up real soon, uh, but we'll move away from tanks again for a while, and um, we'll see where it takes us. Hopefully we'll get an update soon, and that will put a new level of interest back into it. But until such times, I'll just leave you with this, and I will catch you later. Thanks very much. Bye.